20th century bore witness to the rise of the dictator, tyrannical oppressors whose names and deeds would be recorded in blood, in the pages of history. Of all these despots, none ruled with such terror, such heinous disregard for human dignity than Michael Laycock, nemesis of Newlands. Origins of Laycock lie shrouded in the mists of time. What we do know come from vague sources that can be contradictory in nature. He was raised a Puritan and quickly developed a dislike for Catholics, Mormons, Episcopalians, Rastafarians, Liberals, Beatniks, Communists, the French, Welsh people, vegans, student teachers, extremists, moderates, libertarians, existentialists and small dogs. The only thing they are good for is death. Yes, yes, yes. It was here in 1986 that Laycock rose to prominence. In these hallowed corridors, a truly infamous despot was born. Like many other tyrants, Laycock was quickly able to acquire a horde of unruly followers who were willing to spread his gospel to the four corners of the school. Those who resisted this authoritarian regime were subjected to draconian punishments. You stupid boy! How dare you come here and ask me to clarify a question? <laughs> <laughs> Laycock meant different things to different people. To some, he was a symbol of repression. To others, he was a godlike figure sent by the fates to lead the Newlands masses into a brave new world. I am the school's fairy godfather. It was here that Laycock began his program of re-educating the masses. In this classroom, a legend was born that would last through the ages. In A6, many a student suffered grievous bodily harm from his acerbic wit and brutal behavior management strategies. But it was also here that he amassed a horde of devoted acolytes, all willing to spread the gospel according to Laycock. All right, class, get your books out. Look as though you're doing something important in case somebody in authority comes in. He could hypnotize his disciples with enlightening tales spanning the length and breadth of human existence. All right, that's my job done for the day. I'm off for a stress pill. Bail out when the bell goes. And it is from here, perhaps, that we may catch a glimpse of the truth behind Laycock. I'm going to miss about Neon's College. I think I'll miss some very good friendships. I'll also miss some very good students who I have great affection for, but in my case, after 40 years, you miss a lot of students who you had great affection for. You lose contact, you don't find out, or seldom find out what's happened to them. So you can just hope like hell that they've done well and you contributed a little to that success. So how will history judge this extraordinary character? Will he be remembered as a tyrant who terrorized generations of students? Or as a visionary whose selfless devotion to the art of history teaching liberated the minds of many? These will be the questions 
for the historians of tomorrow. What is clear, however, is that his legacy will be etched into our hearts and minds forever. Thank you.